so I'm just going to pop up my blade. Watching, watching, ah, ah, oh, wait, 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 pop up my blade. Watching, watching, ah, ah, oh, wait, 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 pop up my blade. Watching, watching, ah, ah, oh, wait, wait, wait. just finished off the spring series uh, with the grapefruit and rose wine video make sure you guys check that out but now we are in the summer summer summertime and the wine that we are about to make is going to be that slap it's going to be a hit and a classic for the summer. This is gonna be Pina Colada, a tropical classic that we probably all have had at some point in time. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get into this one because it's really not too much to talk about because like I said, a, a lot of us pretty much probably have tried some kind of Pina Colada beverage, but I'm about to give you my spin and take on this. Here it is, a groove slightly transformed. There's a few little things that I have to go over uh, as far as flavor profile, what we're using for this one, so on and so on, the usual most of the time. But uh, as you notice, for this one, we are going with a bucket. Uh, there's another YouTuber. Uh, that I like watching. Uh, he has a channel called Let's Wine About It, or Don't Wine About It, but I think it's Let's Wine About It. And I'm gonna make sure I put his information up in the video. Uh, I like his approach, and I like what he said about using the bucket in the carboy. Guys, I mean, he's actually right. Uh, using the bucket ahead of time when you make the wine allows you to put a little bit more liquid into it so you can get like a, over a gallon worth of must out of this. So when you're putting your wine into your carboy or your must into your carboy or whatever, it gives you the right amount of um, liquid or must in your carboy because as you rack, you will be losing some of your must as you rack over and over again. It just depends on how much you rack. So you technically not gonna start off with that gallon if you start with a gallon carboy. So it would be nice, like I told you uh, up in the equipment video, if you can get you a bucket, it probably would be better, especially if you're trying to get uh, a gallon of wine, a, a true gallon of wine, because you'll pretty much wind up with more than you need if you start it off this way. Um, also, uh, when I'm giving measurements um, while I'm thinking about it, as far as the sugar is concerned, I know you guys might think two to three pounds worth of sugar is a lot, but it's really not. It's just that in the beginning, you're using the sugar to get your ABV, your potential alcohol that your yeast is going to make. And your yeast have a tolerance, and like Steady, steady saying, says, they can't read. So sometimes you'll get close to that ABV tolerance, and sometimes it might be above. But uh, I tend to make my wine strong sometimes because of what I just said earlier about having the space in your carboy 
you can actually take some water, uh, some of the water that you use, um, some other wine that you may have that's similar, and kind of top that carboy up where you have enough space up in it so you don't potentially oxygenate it. So you can do different things like that. And plus, once you put a little water up in a higher ABV wines, uh, whatever, like 14, 15%, or whatever it may be, that water helps dilute that wine. So you might not start off as, um, like I said, even though you might start off with a strong wine, it might wind up uh, being a little bit less ABV just because you add a little bit of water to top it off at the end. But let's get into it. Uh, like I said, we are going into the Pina Colada wine. This is the first wine that I am doing for the summer. I am also doing a full part series for this to cover the summer. So this is number one. And I have some interesting ones that I thought about to do for the summer. And right now we're hitting our ingredients. So we are going with four pounds of pineapple, 12 ounces of toasted coconut, shredded. We are going with one and a half pounds of white sugar, one and a half pounds of raw cane sugar. We are using one pound of these bananas. Now guys, the purpose of the bananas up in this recipe is not to add banana flavor. It's to add a little body to our wine. Uh, you can actually add this to a lot of your fruit wines if uh, some of the wines happen to be a little thin. Putting about a pound of bananas in that wine could help get you a little viscosity out of it. Like I said, a little bit more body out of it. So that's like a little hack that you can do. Uh, also, I have some pears up in the refrigerator. I didn't want to leave them out, but pears also do the same thing. And like I said, I'm not going to say they won't impart any flavor to it, but it's going to be minuscule, very little. So you don't have to worry about the bananas or the pear overpowering it. The pear is basically doing the same thing that the bananas are doing, adding a little bit more body to it. And that's what I want out of this wine since uh, when making coconut wine, it tends to be a little thin. Uh, our tannin up here is for the mouthfeel. That's, you know, to give you that nice mouthfeel so you don't feel like you're really drinking water or anything. And we're using half a teaspoon of that. We also should be using half a teaspoon of our peptic enzyme um, to help clear this out since we're gonna have some stuff that's gonna make this pretty cloudy. So I'm hoping our peptic enzyme, our peptic enzyme do what it does or do what it needs to do, make it do what it do, baby. But yeah, that's why we're using that. Uh, and also this time I didn't forget the yeast. We will be using 1 4 teaspoon of Lauvin BM 4x4. I'm still using this yeast, guys, because one, nothing is wrong with it. Two, I still have some left up in the packet, and it should add a nice, interesting flavor to our wine. Uh, and also in the back, I thought I went over it. I, maybe I didn't, but if I didn't, one gallon of water for this. And this time we're going to use a straining bag up in this video uh, to put our fruit in. But as we go along, I'm going to show you through the steps of what I'm going to use this for. But uh, before I start blabbering and going into a, a, a rant, I just also want to say if you guys ever notice when you go to the store or some of the brew shops and you get these concentrates or these certain juice, some of the juices says uh, contains natural flavoring or contains. One. 
One, two, two, three, three, four. Oh, Pot. I am adding our water. We're going to end up starting this to boil. And I wanted to tell you before, I said a gallon, but I'm probably going to use like a gallon and 32 ounces, which is one quart. Uh, that way we'll have a little bit extra as far as to put up in our bucket like i said the more we have to start off with the better off we'll be so i'm gonna go ahead and start this i'm gonna put a little bit more water like i said that's gonna be 32 ounces which equals one quart so we're gonna turn our stove up to high as i normally show y'all i'm just talking to you through this video because i don't think some of y'all might uh understand the steps when i go through it because it might look like i'm skipping stuff but i'm not actually skipping anything i'm just actually multitasking i'm doing a few other things while i'm doing this so like i said i'm going to get uh that quart of water pour up in here it's going to start off um boiling and we're going to get to the rest of this hello ladies and gentlemen all right so we're back to this stove i put everything on boil uh as you see up in the back i went ahead and cut um cut my flame off or should i say the electricity guys like i said working with electricity for uh cooking is ugh. i love using my gas and i'm not used to all of this so anyway it eventually came to a ball so we got everything to a ball which is good so now what we're going to do is add in our sugar which is our pound and a half of white sugar oh man i'm probably gonna have to take a little bit of water because of that steam put up in there to get most of our sugar out or it might be fine so it's all good but we're going to take our pound and a half of raw cane sugar and put up in there and guys basically what we're going to do is mix all of this up 
until it's dissolved. And after that, we're going to put our coconut in. Since the water is already hot, our coconut is basically, is, it's gonna steep. Similar, like I said, we're making the tea. It don't have to cook down or anything. Uh, the actual coconut I'm using is the same coconut I use from the coconut and lime mojito video. Guys, check it out. I guarantee you it's probably gonna be one of those sleepers as far as uh, a wine that you guys might want to try but uh go ahead and check that video out we'll leave it up there in the corner somewhere for y'all but to see how long it took for the sugar to dissolve no time at all so like i said the next steps we're going to put our coconut strips up in there and we're going to stir that in for a little bit but we're going to also just let it sit up in there so as this is uh cooling it's going to help macerate some of those flavors out of the coconut and that's what we want so we're going to do that and then i'll show you the next step when they get to it all right guys i'll be right back okay Ladies and gentlemen, we added our coconut up in here. So I'm just gonna stir it around. Mix that all up. And that hot water, now sugar water or simple syrup, whatever you wanna say, it's gonna help extract this coconut flavor out of the coconut. Basically, we're gonna let this sit until it cool off. See about room temperature, 75 degrees, or just around that number. Uh, basically, we just trying to get it to a, a good temperature to uh, pitch our yeast. Guys, when you read your yeast package, especially I believe on Lavin, it does have the temperature for uh, pitching your yeast when you're putting it into your liquid. So check it out, it's on there. But like I said, we're gonna let this sit, cool down, get some of these nice coconut flavors. Get our summertime vibe going on. Like I said, guys, you know, I, if you can smell this, like I said, we have the pineapples we have the pear and the bananas up in here and then you have the juice from the pineapples guys this smells so good if you can smell what i'm smelling like oh my god but we'll be right back as soon as this cool down i'll show you the next step up in this process So guys, we are back. Uh, it's actually been a minute. I was letting the stuff cool down. So in the meantime, I went ahead and grabbed me a strainer. So when I tell you guys to strain and filter, this is basically what I mean. But uh, usually I'm using one of the smaller strainers to put it on top of the pitcher and strain the stuff into it but now I'm about to grab my pot and strain uh, the coconut. From our simple syrup. And what I'm gonna do is take our coconut strands this time and actually dump them and get rid of them. Now guys, I know when I said about uh, coconut, lime and mojito wine that I made that I'm using the same coconut. These coconut shreds actually had enough flavor in them that I can actually make 
another batch of wine from them. If you actually see and smell the liquid, which I'll grab the camera after I finish getting some of this out to show you guys. There's nothing wrong with it. Matter of fact, everything was fine because I put these coconut shreds in the freezer. So I froze them to actually preserve them. But uh, like I said, we got as much use possible out of them as we can, or could, should I say. And as you see, get the last remainder of the juice out of here. And guys, just that quick, with me merging the coconut juice with the pineapple juice, we got a good smell of the pina colada. That pina colada scent. And it smells so good. Make you want to start singing the song. I'm actually messing with my son in the background, but at least I know the, the chorus. So just, just teasing. Yeah, we gonna wind up dumping this. I don't wanna keep the camera rolling while I do that. So in a minute, I'm gonna actually grab my camera and I'm gonna show you how this look. That effect, I'll grab the camera, bring it towards me, and show you guys what we have. Look at that. And guys, like I said, it smells so good. So, so good. But what we're gonna do now, I'm gonna grab our cup, I have a measuring cup right over here. And I actually probably have about three grams of the BM 4x4, guys. I know I told you one fourth of um, a teaspoon, but I believe I have about three, one fourth of a teaspoon up in here, probably about three grams. And like I said, I just want to use a little bit more because I want to make sure that this one starts off pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and get my yeast starter going and let it sit for 15 minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and add that up in there. We're going to give it 15 minutes. Stir it around, dump it up in our bucket over here, stir that around, do a little shaking so we can get some oxygen up in it. We're gonna seal it with our airlock and our bung, allow it to ferment five to seven days or more until complete. And that'll be all she wrote for the pina colada wine for right now. But guys, thank you for joining me. I'm glad you guys did. And make sure you check me out for the second video that we have coming along. That's it, not finished entirely, 
but I'll be right back. I just want to let you guys know that.